Right, Professor, it's time for your tenable question. And it concerns the top ten Star Wars The Old Republic characters. Well, uh, Lana Benico. You're saying Lana Benico. Let's see if that's a tenable answer. Lana Benico is a tenable answer. Well done, Professor. Have you got another answer? Revan. Darth Revan. You're saying Darth Revan. Let's see if that's a tenable answer. Darth Revan is a tenable answer. Well done, Professor. Robert Langdon manages to get all of the tenable answers. But then he goes on to the next tenable question, and he fails to get all ten answers. Oh, Robert, I'm sorry, but you're terrible at tenable. Again, Warwick, I'm not terrible at it. I just wasn't that good at that particular question. Like, I didn't know enough answers to that question. Oh, what a smile it brings to my face to finally meet the limit of Professor Robert Langdon's knowledge. <laughs> I would rather have loads of knowledge about symbology rather than the popular culture stuff. It doesn't matter, Professor. It will cost you not knowing certain things, because now you have to face the Release the Hound's dog run. <laughs> Dr. J, Dr. J, call me Dr. J, Dr. J, Dr. J, wake up now. Robert Langton successfully completes the dog run. Ah, you fool! Meanwhile, in the USA, in the future, Gracie, Adam can't know that I'm taking over Oscorp. As far as, he, as he's concerned, we've just moved over to America. Yeah, you've already said that a thousand times, Glenn. I get the picture. As long as it's sunk in, Gracie. I don't want any betrayal to happen then, otherwise you will face my wrath and fury. Oh, I'm so scared, Glenn. You should be, Gracie. I don't want Jesse knowing anything either, or Liam. Well, it's lucky that Oscorp is now a secret organisation and it's not in the public eye anymore. Otherwise you would be all over the news. We will eventually bring Oscar back into the public eye, but the time's not right yet. Adam, Liam and Jesse will eventually know that, that I am the new owner of Oscar when the time is right. And I decide when the time is right, not you, Gracie. Yes, you'd like to be in control as usual. Exactly. We can't have any cock-ups. This is serious. Oh, lighten up, Glenn. Esther is not wrecking our relationship. That's another reason to move a to move to America to get away from her. Esther is one of my best friends. Not anymore, Gracie, if you want to, to stay with me. Langdon, by completing the dog run, you have secured the freedom of all of these members of the public. Brilliant. That was the general idea of me getting through tenable 
release the hounds and tipping point back in the future right gracie we're bringing prostitution and drug deals um into our squarp oh, okay glenn it's not as if i can say no to it is it no you can't gracie Meanwhile, outside the old square premises in the forest, Robert Langdon is with Sophie. Look, what is this? It looks like it's been burnt by some radioactive substance, like acid or something. Robert refers to something that is on the ground, and he picks it up. This symbol, I've seen it before. It's the symbol of Oscorp. It's a facility. <clears throat> but it was, it's, it's a company. It, it was shut down years ago. Because there was too many dodgy deals going through there. And even like evil people were the owners at, at, at one point or another. Maybe we're actually close to where the facility used to be. Because I don't think it was ever demolished. I think it's still there, actually. Now, Gracie, are you going to be all right? Managing the reception because I've got some business to take care of. What sort of business, Glenn? Never you mind. You don't need to know the details. It's unimportant. Oh, okay. I'll just go to the reception. Grace goes to the reception and Glenn goes to his office. The office that has belonged to many Oscorp owners in the past, including Derek Brannan, Pascal Sauvage, and Norman Osborne, even Patrick Blake as well. And then he locks his office door and sits down at his desk, and then he um, opens up his laptop, and he has a Skype call with someone. And that someone is Dr. J. Ha, ah, Glenn Donovan! <laughs> it's time Oscorp and my company go into business with each other. And uh, we want to get some revival machines on those production lines. Yes. We'll revive Fraser Black. Gracie's dad. <laughs> but not because I want him at my side. It's because I want to make him suffer. Because he's always been a thorn in my side. Trying to snatch... The underworld from my grasp. But the underworld belongs to me. I am the kingpin. But now that I own Oscorp, I won't just be boss of the underworld. I will be the boss of most of the world. Yes, along with me, whether you like it or not. This deal would have never gone through if it weren't for me. And don't you forget that. You would never be the boss of Oscorp if it wasn't for me. Doing some backroom deals to get you into the position that you're in. Yes, well, Gracie doesn't know about our relationship. She doesn't know anything about you, not even your name. 
<laughs> so that means she doesn't know about the romantic side of things either. No, obviously not. Otherwise, she would split up with me. And I wouldn't have control over her anymore. Oh, Glenn, you are a brute. You would probably beat her into, into submission, wouldn't you? Well, wouldn't you do the same thing? Like, I don't like doing that sort of thing unless it's absolutely necessary. Well, I, I, don't, mind, I don't mind doing it to, like, men, but when it comes to women, it's slightly different. Well, since I'm a woman, it's the opposite for me because I don't like I don't mind beating up women, but w when it comes to men, it's slightly different for me. Oh, who am I kidding? I'm lying, Glenn. I'm bisexual, you say. So. You may think I'm merciless, but when it comes to my romantic infatuations, I can be quite soft when I want to be. Well, I guess you could say the same about me as well. Like, even when it comes to members of my family, like my sons. Like... My relationships with my sons is everything to me. Like I would, I, I would do anything to protect them and Gracie. So what you're saying is you have the right to beat them up, but others don't. Exactly. Now. Alan Sugar might be a useful person to revive. He may have been an annoyance to Norman Osborne, but he could be an asset to us. Like, he could provide us with loads of money. Like, we could force him to give us money and anything else we require to fund my scientific endeavours and to fund your prostitution and, and drug deals and everything else you want to do and everything else I want to do. Yeah, sounds like my cup of tea. It's a good idea. Ah, hopefully you can pull some strings to get a UV box in my office. Because I've already got a flat screen TV. Why settle with you when you can have Sky? All you have to do is kidnap Rupert Murdoch. Well, <laughs> could you do that for me? Because I can't be fucking ass, to be honest. Oh, Glenn, stop being lazy and pull your socks up. Where's your spirit gone? Well, I could say the same about you. Why don't you do it? Why am I expected to do everything? Look, I've already agreed to revive Alan Sugar, so you can concentrate on Reaper and Meridoc. Oh, very well. Alan Sugar gets revived and he's brought before Glenn. Glenn Donovan, you're fired. You don't have the right to fire me, you ponce. Oscorp's not the same as it used to be. It's a secret organisation now. Why is that? Well, it's not in the public eye anymore, and that's all you need to know. The B-1 robot breaks into Rupert Murdoch's office. Put him up! I'll fight you, you bloody robot! 